Grace Christian Academy has two defining distinctives. Number one is that we're Christian. Number two is that we're classical. As a Christian school, what we mean by that is we are a ministry of Grace Reformed Baptist Church. Every one of our teachers here is required to have a clear testimony of salvation, and they're all required to be members in good standing in a Bible-believing church, and they're all required to regularly seek out opportunities to integrate biblical teaching into their subject matter, whether that be physics or phys ed. As a classical school, what we mean by that is uh, the term classical goes back to the uh, classical period of the ancient Greeks and Romans. And their approach to education, their philosophical base is very different than what we find in uh, the majority of uh, American education today. What predominates the academic landscape in America today is uh, primarily progressivism. And at the heart of progressivism, along with a, a whole series of anti-Christian philosophies, is this notion that if you cannot detect something with your five senses, then you shouldn't teach it. John Dewey went as far as uh, communicating that uh, to, to teach a child morality is to do that child a disservice. We at GCA do what we do because the first authority that we must answer to is God. Uh, who has first given to us? He's given us grace. He's given us mercy. He's made it possible for us to know the truth. And as individuals who have now seen the truth and embraced the truth and have been blessed by the truth, um, we know that it is our responsibility to then pass that truth on to others, especially in an environment where, in a heavily academic environment, where the students are being taught things that are antithetical to truth. Why do we do it? First of all, because we care. Um, you know, every one of us can point back to points in our education where we were taught things that were false. Uh, they were not scientific. They were not based in fact. They were someone's opinion that they dressed up in a fancy way to make us consume it. Um, and we look back on those moments now and, and a lot of times we get angry. You know, why did they teach me that? It's not true. It's not good. It's not beautiful. What we are doing, each one of us, is taking advantage of an opportunity to rescue others from that false teaching, to uh, equip them with teaching that is consistent with reality, uh, reality being that which God created. Ancients of Greece and Rome, they had a different idea, and that was that before you can rightly discern what you detect with your five senses, you must first have a set of virtue in place. The Christians came along and said, we know what that virtue is. It's knowing God and knowing his word. So here, uh, our primary objective is to regularly give students opportunity to know the Savior um, and then to educate them accordingly. The structure that we follow as a classical school is called the Trivium. And the Trivium is a three-stage approach that addresses how children receive and then retain information. The first stage of the trivium is called the grammar school. Uh, here that is kindergarten through sixth grade. Its primary focus is in communicating to our students the, uh, the facts, who, what, where, when of all the disciplines. My favorite thing about GCA is that I get to learn my history. Um, my friends, my teachers, and recess. I really love the school because they are really kind to us. My favorite class is Latin, um, piano, and science. Um, piano and all like you play songs and on the piano keys. Um, we continue with that through the sixth grade and uh, begin to prepare them for the second part of the trivium, which is the School of Logic. That's our seventh and eighth grade. That is where we transition from the concrete who, what, where, when to the more abstract why and how. Uh, the focus of the School of Logic is training them how to think and how to think rightly uh, using laws of logic. A time that I used 
something from this school on the outside world was logic because I was basically looking at debates and I was all these fallacies that I've learned like putting them into use and seeing how people are going wrong with their speeches. Then we move them on to our school of rhetoric. That's our high school, ninth through 12th grade. And that is where uh, they research, they develop their own ideas. Uh, and that is where we train them how to eloquently articulate uh, and how to intelligently defend their ideas. I think GCA is taking a different approach than it would in public school. I think public school is obviously secular based and I think that they're telling you how to believe a secular worldview while I was in, while I was in GCA where we were believing a Christian worldview. And I think that's important because we're teaching you here how to defend your faith and how to grow in your faith. And I think those are two important things to go into the real world where you're not going to have this type of nurturing after you're 18. Uh, the teachers um, care about your soul here. They care about your experience here. All my teachers know me and my academics and, and my personality and they can have a regular conversation with me. Um, whereas in a public school, I'm pretty sure I would just be another number. I think it's important to have biblical, uh, a biblical world, world view, especially in this school, because um, I feel like in comparison with um, other schools, especially in today's society, there's not much of an emphasis on learning traditional values in terms of education and just uh, integrating that into uh, you know, the, the younger generation today. So I think that it's really important, especially as Christians, for us to have a real knowledge of how God you know, is involved in all sorts of um, subjects in, you know, in education, even in math, in history, in English, in any subject that you can name. Uh, God is the author of that because He's the author of the world and He's uh, the creator of it. So we ought to give Him the glory that He deserves. And so because of that, um, I think that's why a, bibl a biblical worldview is so important um, because um, in any other school or in any other uh, sort of system, uh, you're not going to be taught that. So it's very important while you're still young and you have the ability to be influenced in a good and a positive way. So. I think it's something that's going to prepare them for the long run as opposed to the public school who prepares them for tactical thinking, but I think here we prepare for strategic thinking in the future. We talked about it in constitutional law. <laughs> That's where I got the terms from. I always tell people that like my school is a very small school. We're a kindergarten through 12th grade school and we don't have, a, we don't even have a fraction of what a lot of people in, in especially in the New York City public schools have. Like not, it's not even a fraction of that. But at the same time, I feel like that's so good. I think that's so much better than having 30 to 40 kids in a class. Uh, because, you, first of all, you have more participation. Second of all, you, you get to learn more. The teacher gets to um, elaborate more on what their curriculum is. And there's just more involvement and there's more, and therefore there's more understanding. Like, I feel if, you know, I was learning a subject such as math or, um, or science, you know, or like I'm taking phases this year, I wouldn't be able to understand all that I know if I was in a classroom with 30 to 40 kids and you know you're just rushing through you know you're rushing through the course having you almost being forced to say oh you understand this you understand that with a classroom size of no more than 10 to 12 people it's you really get the opportunity to um, really uh, you know understand uh, what you're learning and you get to ask questions and you get to be involved you get to participate and I feel like that's something that a lot of kids in bigger schools uh, don't get the opportunity to so I'm definitely grateful for that They make you feel safe here at GCA just through, once again, going back to the accountability. You know, you have the ability to sit down with them and just be like, hey, I'm having a problem here, or this person is giving me a problem and they will get on it because they really do care about your safety and your mental well-being and just how your experience is here at GCA. This year when we learned about um, Sigmund Freud and we read about the civilization of this discontent, Mr. Clemens has specifically made you know, us feel safe when he was saying, you know, it's going to be uncomfortable and this is, but with the, this is what the world believes and, you know, here this is where you like discover like what real theology is and how to defend your faith and I think that made me feel safe just because the fact that I didn't have to mess up in public where it actually mattered as opposed to here where this is like a learning experience and about how to defend your faith to secular people in the future. Our uh, ultimate goal for our students here is to uh, provide for them a superior uh, academic and Christ-centered education uh, that will earn them platforms 
by which to then engage their culture in its battle for ideas. I feel like the education that you get here and the biblical worldview that is integrated into the system and the friendships that you're able to form uh, through the gospel is something that's so encouraging and something that benefits me spiritually and emotionally and mentally because um, without that, you know, I could be in a very different place right now. If you decide that this is the direction that God is leading you and your family in, then please give us a call at 516-379-2223 or you can reach us on the internet at gcali.com. We would invite you to visit our Facebook site at Grace Christian Academy Long Island. We want to thank you for listening to us and uh, considering us for your educational needs and your family.